Let us now look at the standards, the instructions or the rules in the kingdom of God. I think this is very important for us to at least understand this one portion of the kingdom of God. As we said from the first time that we spoke, it is not just anything for everybody and doesn't matter what you do. The kingdom of God has a set of standards and rules in the word of God. And I believe that the biggest mistake we can make is to say that these rules and standards don't apply to me. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 5, it speaks about Yeshua. It says of Yeshua, the anointed one, the trustworthy witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, he who loves us, delivered us from our sins through his blood. And he made us a kingdom of priests for God his Father. To him the honor, glory, worship, the dominion for timeless eternity. Yes, all the glory and all the honor belongs to the Father. But Yeshua came and through his blood sacrifice as a sin offering, gave us the opportunity to have life. And this life that he gave us, he said, and he made us through that a kingdom of priests for God his Father. The first thing that I see in the kingdom of God is that we right now are appointed and anointed by his spirit to be priests in his kingdom. Now the task of the priest is to stand between the person bringing his sacrifice, guiding him, helping him to bring the sacrifice. But the priest has another function as well, and that is to intercede for the person. I believe that we as priests in the kingdom of God have the wonderful opportunity to be an intercessor, to stand in the gap for other people. People have a need to fulfill that need. If people do not understand, to bring them the understanding. To be the in-between. Not like the priest in some groups that I must pray through him to get to the Father. No, every single person has a direct open channel to the Father. But the priest who can help those with need, and can help people to understand the kingdom of God and to bring the sacrifices that is needed. This, I believe, is only the first of what we have to be and the standards that God has set for his kingdom. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 13, Shaul wrote, I testify to you before God who gives life to all things and before Yeshua the Anointed One who testified the good testimony before Pontius Pilate that you would execute the commands That, I believe, is the, is the crutch. That is the, that is the most important part of any message in the Word of God. That you should execute the commands and be without any mark or fault, to be unblemished in doing these commands until the revelation of our Master Yeshua, the Anointed One. That was was chapter 6, verse 14. That we would execute His commands in an unblemished way. In other words, 
not changing it according to our standards, not changing it to fit into our character, to fit into our culture as we see it or understand it, but unblemishedly execute the commands of God. Now perhaps you should go and look at that verse in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 13 and 14 again and make sure that you use a proper translation. I believe that this also is very clear that we cannot just change anything of God's commands to suit us. But that His commands is part of the kingdom life that we must live. Matityahu, Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. During that time, the student followers came to Yeshua and said, Who are truly the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Yeshua called the boy and let him stand between them and said, Truly, I say to you, if you do not change and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Of heaven. Everyone then who humbles himself to be like this boy, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Many times we think about our degrees, about our accomplishments in life, that God somehow owes us something for what we did. But that is not the standard in the kingdom of God. The standard in the kingdom of God is he who humbles himself, who understands there is nothing I can do but through the undeserved favor and grace of our loving Father. God has given us the opportunity to be his children. We do not deserve that. I do not deserve to be child of God. But since God has given us this undeserved favor to be His child, I have to answer this grace, this undeserved favor with obedience according to His will. I have to live, be, and do that which He has called me to do. That is the only way in which I prove that I am part of the kingdom of God. As we see in the previous verses, and as we see here, it's not about the big things that I do. It's about the attitude of being part of the kingdom, of humbling myself under Him and under His commands, under His desires. Matityahu chapter 25 verse 1. Here Yeshua gives us an example of the kingdom of God. And again it comes as part of the standards. Then the kingdom of God will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bride and bridegroom. But five of them were wise and five were foolish. And those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their containers together with their lamps. In waiting for the king to come, for the bridegroom to arrive, for the feast, some were prepared, having oil, waiting for whenever he comes to be ready. At that moment, some, perhaps they say, it, well, it's okay, we will get some later, or we will get it from somebody else. Don't worry, there's still a lot of time. Or perhaps they just didn't care. When the time comes and the bridegroom arrives, they had a sad word coming to them. Uh, 
Matthew, or Matthew chapter 25 verse 11. And afterwards the other virgins came and said, Our master, our master, open for us. But he will answer and say to them, It is true, I say unto you, I do not have a covenant relationship with you. I do not know you. I have no blood covenant through the blood of Yeshua with you. But we were there. We waited. We expected the bridegroom to come. As all the others, we knew the bridegroom is coming. We were waiting. But you were not ready in the way the bridegroom prescribed. The bridegroom prescribed to be filled with his spirit, to live according to his will, to obey his law, his standards, each and every one of his commands. The bridegroom went away to prepare a place for us. And in going, he said, Be prepared. I come like a thief in the night. Nobody knows when I come. We have so many other things that we do. We have so many busyness with religion and with the things of God. Accept obeying, living according to the standards that He gave us. Matthew, or Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 where a, is, a, is a basis verse in the Bible for me. To me, everything else centers around this one verse. When it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all, and refers to all the things that it mentions in the previous few verses. Then all things you need, all the things you worry about, all the things that seem so important right now. First, seek the kingdom of God, and all these things will be given and added to you in any case. If we concentrate on the kingdom of God, if our attitude is about the kingdom of God, if we have no other desires but to serve the kingdom of God, our Father who is in heaven will see each and every small little thing we need. And he will provide for those who concentrate on the kingdom of God. We cannot concentrate in changing our attitude. We have to concentrate in obedience to the kingdom of God and we will know how to change our attitude. We cannot change our deeds, our ways, our sinful things that we were used to be doing. But once we have the Spirit of God, by concentrating on the kingdom of God, the need for those things will just disappear. How do I get rid of, say, a need for drugs, for uh, nicotine, a need for alcohol? How do I get rid of this need? What system must I use? What is the steps to get rid of this dependency? Nothing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. In other words, have the desire to serve the kingdom only. Have the desire to only follow the king. Have and live according to the desire and the things that God commands in his kingdom. And I will not have the need or the desire for all these other things. That is the promise of God. You see, if we take the word of God literally, that is what he said. Don't concentrate on those things you 
need to change. Don't concentrate even on the things you need, like food. Concentrate on the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added to you. How wonderful it is to discover this tremendous truth. Because it is the truth. We have seen and experienced it in our own lives and in the lives of those who really understand this principle. Once you start to concentrate on doing the kingdom things, on thinking kingdom with an attitude of kingdom, not my desire, not my wishes, not my needs, but concentrating on the kingdom of God, we suddenly see all these other things happens almost as if naturally, almost naturally God just share them with those who concentrate on the kingdom. I have no hesitation in saying, if we do that, all the things will be added to you. That verse is repeated in Matthew, or Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. Instead, seek the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. He repeats it. He knows this is important. But he continues and he say, do not be afraid, small herd, because your father willed it to give unto you the kingdom. He willed it that we will receive the kingdom of God. And in this kingdom, he will fulfill his promises. Verse 33 can continue. Sell your belongings and give to the needy. Make for yourself purses which do not age. Invest in the unfailing in heaven, where no thief comes near moth, nor moth destroys it. Because where your riches are, there your thoughts, will, and emotions will also be. Well, I challenged many people in the past. Where is your thoughts and your mind? Where is the concentration of your thinking? That's your kingdom. That's where your riches are. God says that we must invest in His kingdom. Our time, our effort, our money, our attitude... We must invest in that which really counts unto eternity. Did we invest into the kingdom of God with everything that we have? And now, God has taught us from the beginning of our walk with God in our relationship that no, we don't need your money. We don't need you to say, I'm giving this into the kingdom of God. Harry, what is your bank account? That's not necessarily what this means. It means that I should invest in the need of those that is part of my fellowship, part of my group, the widow, the orphan, the person who cannot help himself, we should be willing to invest everything we have in the kingdom of God, which consists of helping those who have a need. Yeshua himself told the story. He said, I was in jail and I was sick and I was ill and I was hungry and you didn't take care of me. And then they ask him and say, but when were you sick and when were you health? When were you in jail and when were you hungry? And he said that you don't do it for the least of those that is around you that have those needs. You didn't do it to me. That's how kingdom works. Kingdom is not for the big things and the things that lift up our names and, hey, I've given this much or I've helped this person. No, the kingdom of God is about the king and those in need of the king. 